There's an old Chinese proverb that says, you can't polish a turd. This customer dropped off this guitar in my absence uh, when I wasn't here, which is what in my absence means. And, and then called me up and said, um, the strings are a little bit too high. Can you just do a neck adjustment like the other guy did last time? Well, first of all, I don't know what guy or how long ago. And also, um, when people say a neck adjustment, they usually mean a truss rod adjustment. But a truss rod adjustment isn't actually how you do a setup. I mean, it's part of a setup, but uh, that's not how you do a setup. And more importantly, uh, some guitars, like this one, can't be set up. And this is just one of many. So let's just throw this guitar on the bench and talk about it. Yeah, you see, this is a turd. Now, you might be wondering, how come I can just touch it with my bare hands and it's not even sticky? Well, you see, because this is a fossilized dinosaur turd. It's 60 million years old. Well, to be precise, this particular one is 60 million and one years old. Okay, and this is the kind of turd that in theory, oh, excuse me, guitar quackery. Oh, good question. A viewer is asking how I can tell that this particular turd is 60 million and one years old. Well, you see, when I bought it, I was told that it was 60 million years old. Yeah, but that was last year. Ah, <laughs> oh, make sure you subscribe. Thanks, bye. As I was saying, in theory, we could polish this turd, but you see, when when we speak of polishing turds, we're not really talking about polishing fossilized dinosaur turds. We're talking about polishing fresh, soft turds, and that can't be done. Obviously, when the old Chinese philosophers said, you can't polish a turd, they also weren't thinking of fossilized dinosaur turds. They were obviously thinking of well, to be honest, they were just speaking metaphorically, right? And they were specifically thinking of guitars in need of setups. Ah, you see, now we're back at the guitar shop. Often, people bring guitars to me and tell me, my guitar needs a setup. Well, <laughs> maybe. Sometimes that's all the guitar needs. But sometimes there are other issues going on and uh, a setup is simply not going to accomplish what the customer really wants, which is a high performance guitar. At this time, I have in the shop a guitar that a customer well just dropped off in my absence. And, you know, he said, well, my guitar just needs a quick neck adjustment and it'll be as good as new. <laughs> well, it turns out that's just not going to cut it. Um, so, welcome back to Guitar Quackery. And let's look at yet another guitar that simply can't be improved by performing a setup because it has some other issues. Yeah, man. You can't polish a turd, but you might be able to wrap it in a gold foil and then polish that. And then you might even be able to sell it. I mean, it's still a turd, but it looks pretty. Let's look at this guitar, right? Here it is. We see it right here on the bench. Uh, first thing I look at when I uh, take an acoustic guitar, when I put it on the bench is I look at the bridge. I look behind the bridge. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at that. Well, we see a bridge lift across the bridge. 
All right, so obviously that's the first problem. Uh, but uh, customers complaining about the strings. He said uh, the strings were too high and we can see that. Yeah, they are in fact too high. You can drive a car uh, under these strings, right? Oh, look at that. Something happened here. Nah, that's just cosmetic. Now, since the customer was suggesting that I do a, a neck adjustment, a truss, adjust, a truss rod adjustment, why don't we, why don't we do that and see if it resolves the issue? Well, first of all, it's not going to solve, resolve, or solve, resolve, yeah? The issue of the uh, bridge lift, but let's keep an open mind and let's do a neck adjustment, truss rod adjustment. We'll need a four millimeter key, Allen key. <sighs> I really don't want to do this. Uh, but all right, uh, here, we keep an open mind. This is uh, the neck. Uh, I placed this right here, uh, close to the heel of the neck so that I don't add additional relief. We have a straight edge and a set of feeler gauges. Uh, let's start with this one. This is uh, 12 one thousandths of an inch right here. If it wants to focus, yeah, 12 one thousandths. Okay, and we'll measure here at the eighth fret. So let's place the straight edge here across the fretboard and let's see if it passes. Uh, it was passing before, almost. Okay, so next one, next one down is 11 one thousandths of an inch. Let's see. Yep, easily passes. Okay, 11, but not 12 on the base side. So now let's move this over to the other side, the treble side, and let's bump it up a little bit to, uh, how about this one? 14 one thousandths of an inch. Can it focus or not? Yeah, you can see 14. Okay, so let's take that one. And let's see. And it does pass through. So that's four. I didn't switch it on you. You can see that's 14 one thousandths of an inch. And, you know, that's the relief on, uh, on the treble side. Now, on the base side, we have 11 one thousandths. On the treble side, we have 14 one thousandths of an inch. So we have a differential relief, but, you know, we have more relief on the treble side. So if, if, if we wanted to have a good differential relief, we would need to have more relief on the bass side, not the other way around like we have on this guitar. So now let's take, take a four millimeter a uh, truss rod wrench, and let's do the so-called neck adjustment. Oh, before we do that, let's measure the action. Now, you know, normally we would measure the action in playing position, but let's not split hairs here. Uh, like I said, if we're going to be polishing a third, let's just not split hairs. Okay, so... Here we can look at the action first on the bass side of the guitar. Good. Uh, here is the action gauge and we see the action here. What is it? It's, it's really high, right? It's about 130. It should be on the bass side if I lower the strings about a hundred, okay? On the treble side, I would need to reposition the camera a little bit and, you know, I'm happy to do it. Uh, like this maybe, or like that. Yeah, uh, 
it's not easy to show uh, this on camera, but I'll do my best. Let me just make sure I'm in focus. Yeah, okay, now let's have a look at that. So here we have, uh, again, we're on the 12th fret, you can see this. That's the high E string, okay? So I'll move these out of the way, put this here. It should be 80 one thousandths of an inch, but it is more like 120 and change, 120. Five maybe okay instead of 80 so if I push the string down I'm using this finger here to push it down it should be 80 okay but it's much higher uh, okay so now a little truss rod adjustment should do the trick right that's what the other guy did hmm? okay. well let's have a look this is the uh, Allen key. Here it is. Okay. So uh, we need to tighten the truss rod. Now, normally I would loosen it first. Why don't we do that? Okay. And now tighten it. Okay. I can hear this creaking. Okay. And the first thing we want to look at is the relief. Because we want to get the right relief first. So now what is the right relief when we have a differential relief, uh, you know, going the other way? Well, I'll try to hit six one thousandths of an inch on the base side that's how it should be if the frets are even i'm not even gonna you know bother looking at the frets but let me see how much it is yeah. we had 11 before this is uh where's 11 this is 11 okay Okay, that's good. Eight. Well, it does go through. Kind of, right? Eight one thousandths. So, uh, we, we tighten it a little more. How about that? And then take another measurement. A little more. Let me do that. Okay, let's tighten it more. Eight one thousandths. Okay, does not go through. Six one thousandths. Passes through. So that's that's our relief on the base side. Please focus. Okay. Oh no, I'm in manual focus. Okay, that's why. Okay. So six one thousandths of an inch. You can see this on the base side. So now the relief is how it should be on the base side, but we know it's going to be more on the treble side, but we need six one thousandths of relief on the base side. So now let's have a look at the action. Did that solve the problem? Resolve the problem? Is it resolve or solve? I don't know. Okay. So we'll look at the base side first. How about that? Like we did last time. Okay. Ready? The moment of truth. Here we have the string on the base side. Well, it did not go down to 100, right? It did not. Uh, what about 
on the other side well again I need to reposition the camera a little higher that should do it bear with me please this is exciting manual focus okay and here we go so I just changed the focus so that we are focused on this side and this should be 81 thousandths of an inch let's move these strings out of the way and we are at well almost 110 okay again I'm using a finger here to to push the string down but we're we're far from 80 80 would be this right we're almost at 110 a little bit below 110 so that's that now there's more I think there there, there should be more <laughs> I think there is more here we go ready uh, first let me show you from above okay I have this uh, straight edge that I can place across the fretboard and it's hitting the bridge it should be kissing the top of the bridge and hitting the saddle but now I have, uh, how should I show you this? I have a gap here. And it's a significant gap. Uh, but when I place it on uh, across the fretboard, it's in fact hitting the bridge. Um, I can position this camera here and show you how much A little zoom okay I think this should be a good viewing angle for you okay so let's look at it from above first again we have the situation and now we wanna change the viewing angle to this change cameras and you can see that this is a quite a significant uh, you know discrepancy so uh, that's not good because after adjusting uh, the truss rod like on a, on a guitar that doesn't have a, a bridge lift after adjusting the truss rod um well let's not even talk about the nut we would need to lower the saddle if the action is still too high but this saddle has already been lowered which i can show you here at some point in the past here we can see it um you know it it's it's been lowered I can tell it's been lowered a little bit and as a result we don't have much of a break angle on this string we have you know enough of a break angle here but if we lower this saddle further it's going to um, you know be almost flush with this bridge or maybe even flush with this bridge I can do a calculation uh, and that will reduce the break angle of all of the strings uh, so that's not good either and like I said we uh, haven't even talked about the nut so let's look at that Okay. Focus 
let's focus now let's look at the knot uh, I typically use this uh, dial indicator to measure how much the string drops so after I push it against the second fret there's there's still a little bit of a gap left I can show you on this string here the gap so we measure this gap and so I drop it down and then this gap is really you know this is this is a really high string slot uh, so this string should only fall if I don't push it down all the way about this much okay but if I do push it down all the way you know it shows that it's really high same thing with the a string not so much the D okay not not so much this is actually pretty good G string pretty good the B too high and then the high E string well is it good yeah it's actually pretty good um, it could be better but uh, yeah all right so what needs to be done well, if we want to fix this guitar first we need to re-glue the bridge uh, this guitar really needs a neck reset but we can't really afford to do that kind of job on this guitar so the next option could be and it's just a compromise a bridge shave we shave down the bridge and make it slimmer so which allows us to uh, shave the saddle and it's still then protruding uh, but that changes the sound of the guitar bottom line we can do a setup on this guitar this is what a turd wrapped in gold foil might look like. Uh, it's still kind of soft uh, and shiny, but let's face it, it's not likely to fool anyone into believing that this is a bar of gold. Uh, I mean, this is not an actual turd. Uh, and it's also not gold foil. Uh, it's just proof of concept. Now, what would that guitar wrapped and gold foil look like uh, in other words what kind of outcome might we expect from doing just a setup just for argument's sake let's try to do or I guess for the sake of this video let's try to do a setup on this guitar without fixing anything um, so we already adjusted the relief of the neck but the action is still too high so next thing we can do is just pull the saddle out and shave it at the bottom put it back into the bridge and put the strings back on and that's gonna obviously lower the action um, so let's uh, look again at the action um, this is the action gauge uh, I can throw some light here so it's uh, a little bit above 120 there uh, yeah maybe 125 not quite 130 and now um to show you the action on the treble side i need to reposition this camera tilt it and refocus okay that should do it um here we can see the action is well it's uh almost at 120 so if i push the string down it should be down to about 80. Uh, obviously it's too high um, let's have a look at the saddle again I believe this saddle has already been lowered by a previous technician. Um, you know, 
I'd like to see a little bit more break angle here. Uh, this side is not too bad, but uh, I believe this has been lowered already at some point. Uh, so now we just need to uh, take the strings off. Pull the saddle out and I will replace it. Here I have a bunch of saddles that I pulled out of uh, other guitars. Here. So these came out of uh, other guitars and the reason why I uh, uh, had to pull them out is because they were too low. Right, so whatever repair work had to be done on those guitars uh, and I required a new saddle. Now this one is uh, similar to the saddle we have on this guitar right now in terms of uh, length and thickness, but it's uh, very low, okay? And I already prepared this saddle, um, so I already took some measurements and I prepared this, but I have not installed it yet. So let's see what we get. Next thing we do is <clears throat> remove the strings from this guitar. Okay, you wanna watch me do it, I guess. Uh, nothing to it. So we measure the action when the guitar is tuned to pitch. Obviously we need to release string tension in order to uh, take the strings off. Strings are pretty loose. And now um, what I do usually is I use a capo and I place it here. And then I just, uh, where's that thing? Just pull the strings out. So I'll show you the whole process now. There you go. Just pulling the string, I mean pulling the uh, bridge pins. They're a little stubborn, which indicates uh, some other issues. that and uh, I usually put the strings inside of the sound hole like this and now we need to just pull this saddle out. It's pretty tight and uh, obviously we, we uh, will see a, a pickup, a transducer and here it is. This is the saddle and here is the one I prepped. So it's lower. So obviously that's going to lower the action. Uh, but like I said, uh, it might not be enough. I don't really know. Let's place it inside. Uh, you can already see that um, this is a very low saddle. We're not going to see much of a break angle when we put the strings back. Just for fun, um, I want to show you the bridge plate on the inside. I always inspect guitars on the inside when I service them. And here I'm just going to uh, use my phone, just a wide angle. And I'm going to record this so you can see the inside of the guitar. Just making sure not to uh, touch the screen. Here, um, here we see the bridge plate. Um, it's not a, a high-end guitar, so 
you can see a lot of tear out and obviously uh, it could be a bit of bridge plate but this is what we see inside of this guitar right now let's end this let me take this light out and now let's just uh, put the strings back you can already see that we are not going to see much of a break angle here uh, the break angle is important uh, because um, it drives the bridge and the bridge drives the soundboard the soundboard amplifies the sound or you could say produces the sound Just like that. This one is a little stubborn. And where's the last one? Okay, so now we can remove the capo. And I can put some tension on the strings. I first do, do the uh, high E and low E. You know, just put some tension on the strings. And then do the other strings. Um, just like that. I usually tune the guitar on the bench. That's what I'm used to doing. While I'm tuning the guitar, I want to ask you something. Are you enjoying this? Because uh, if you are, let them know. I mean, let the YouTube algorithm know so that the YouTube algorithm can recommend more of this type of content to you in the future. Also, take a moment and share a link to this video. Uh, yeah, you can just click the share button or you can even copy the link and go on a guitar forum and just let everybody know. Uh -huh. You can uh, click the link below that says buy me a coffee because I need coffee to function at night while I'm editing. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's some other links below. Uh, now, I know that you are... Uh, waiting in restless anticipation to finally see the outcome of this uh, trust rod adjustment slash setup. Okay, but now we have a situation because we have, uh, let me show you, zoom in a little bit. There you go. So we have a, a saddle that's very low. And here on the treble side, there's hardly any brake angle right there, right? Um, what I wanna do now is I wanna put the camera here to measure the action. And I honestly don't know what it's gonna be. I mean, I have some idea, but you know, I'm not gonna, sh I don't know if it's gonna be just right. I, probably not. So, there, okay, we'll use the same action gauge, or is that light? Uh, it's still a little too high, okay, uh, it should be down to 100, uh, let me focus better on this. It's more like at 115. And oh yeah, 
I need to uh, repose. I need to raise the camera and tilt it a little bit so we can measure. So you you can see what I see on the treble side right there. Okay, refocus. Okay, so the action is still a little higher than it should be. It should be down to 80, but it's, uh, you know, maybe at 88 or so. It's hard to tell. Um, does the guitar play? Uh, well, let's see. I'm playing a D bar chord. descending uh, well the action is still a little bit too high but like I said uh, we have an issue right here at the uh, bridge because I should position the camera like this so you can see the break angle of the strings let's see this uh, so this is what we see, uh, almost no break angle, uh, especially here on this string, nothing. Um, so we can uh, improve this by uh, cutting uh, string slots um, and, you know, uh, restoring the break angle. But this string pretty much vibrates over the saddle. Yeah, look at that. So, when you play it, uh, I think maybe I can even zoom in here. Totally, it vibrates. Yeah. So, obviously this is yet another reason why you need sufficient break angle. Uh, but we tried, you know. Uh, this was just an experiment just to show you that you really can't get a good setup if you have uh, other issues on the guitar, such as uh, uh, the neck angle issue. What have we learned from this? Uh, well, obviously, I can do some adjustments to any guitar and somewhat improve uh, the playability, but... Um, that's not what I do. Um, I specialize in high-end services. High-end doesn't mean that I only work on high-end guitars. I'll, I'll work on squires, on, you know, whatever cheap guitars people bring to me, as long as they want to pay for a high-end service, which is the only thing that I do. Every guitar that leaves guitar quackery must be at a certain standard. I will not just improve the playability of a guitar and give a guitar to the customer if it has a bridge lift or if there's no brake angle over the saddle or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I, I just don't want people to show this guitar to someone and say, hey, uh, this is uh, the outcome of a setup from Guitar Quackery, right? So I, I can't do that. Um, I do like a Japanese hairdresser service. So Japanese hairdresser, you can look it up. When you walk out, you look like a million dollars. And you can tell that <laughs> I don't go to a Japanese hairdresser. But, um, but I do Japanese hairdresser guitar services. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So that's what I do. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, doing any kind of uh, lower level services. You know, I mean, sometimes people just want a hot dog, but then people who want a hot dog shouldn't go to a Michelin star restaurant because they're not gonna make a hot dog there. So it's the same thing here. I just don't do this type of service, even if I can. Whew, I, I know, this is heavy. Again, 
Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope you share this video because uh, there are other people that might benefit from this content. So share this video with your friends on guitar forums, etc. Um, write some comments and click some links below and let's talk soon.